So we are at the last puzzle and I will read all of you. I think it's the last one, right? I, I will read all of you what Bear told me about this one because I'm kind of scared. Uh, Bear says, by the way, the last one is a beast. It may take you a really long time. The solutions to my puzzles are never hard to execute, but finding them is where the difficulty and enjoyment comes from. So apparently this one is significantly harder than the rest of them. Let's go. The 1000 piece puzzle. No. Ah, what the heck? Come on, bro. Um. Um. All right, y'all, and uh, we have reached the end of Bear's Bear 24's puzzles. We beat we beat the last level, uh, and we finished the super world. The more you know, the more you know, the more you know. Okay. Um. Where is the goal? The goal is right here. It looks like in order to get to the goal, we need to remotely trigger an on off switch while a P switch is not activated. Something, 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 there are three mushrooms. Okay, we have to get the three mushrooms. The three mushrooms are right here. Three mushrooms are here. And how the heck do I get up there? I'm, not, I'm assuming I can't get through there, or maybe if I do, this will block me. I don't even know, let's just explore. Let's just explore. What the heck, dude? This is this is where Bear went mad with power. Well, we can get, here, let's, let's just like get items. We can get that. Oh no, dude, look at how many items we have. This is horrible. We can get that. Oh, what the heck? I guess we can move the dude with it. Wait, there's a, I can acquire a mushroom in here, but acquiring mushroom is kind of dumb because what does it do for me? And I'm blocked off from coming in here. Oh, if we hit, if we trigger the seesaw from the other side, then we could lift that spring, um, which would let us go through there. So maybe let's help the stump as my full attention again. There is another stump. Okay, let's think about how we can. There's another stump up there. This is a live farming level, exactly. Okay, how do we how do we do this? We need that to kind of stay there, and then we can come back. So how how do what can we actually bring up there? Since this is S and B three, we really can't bring much up there, right? We can. We could spring something up there, potentially. Maybe. No, we really can't. Or you can't throw up. What happens if you try to do something like this? Uh. <laughs> Nailed it. Oh, if you hit the P-switch, wow, it is a mechanism that infinitely hits P-switches. So you do not want to hit that P-switch. Yeah, I'm thinking I can bounce it up with the spring or something like that. That's what I was kind of trying to do, but I failed kind of miserably. Um, well, at least that tells us no. Let's make a stack. Can we, can this guy help us? <laughs> I don't know if this thing can help us. Also, you're kind of on my sprang. Bruh, you're kind of on my sprang. Can you not be on my sprang anymore? Oh yeah, that does that. Well, fuck you. For now, let's just see what we can do here. Oh, that lets us do that. But then this is the problem here, huh? Hmm. Yeah, I can't get, I can't climb through this. So like, I can't, I can't get through this with the item. So I guess the real puzzle for now is just how do we get through this section? with an item. Maybe I bring something else up there first. Is there another item? It's not really another item. It's like a helmet and stuff. How do I get to the helmet? 
How do I get on top of the, how do I get to the top of the map? How do I do anything? What the heck? I mean, the, the plant has to be there for some reason, right? What else can we do with the plant? I could like, what happens if I push the plant onto the spring? I'm just kind of curious. Will it stay in one spot and bounce or will it kind of move and bounce? It just kind of stays there. Could this be useful somehow? I wonder how this could be useful. Plant is for moral support. What if we instead go up here first? That doesn't do anything, but if I would be... Oh, wait, 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 maybe we can get the mushroom out somehow? Oh, I've got an idea. Oh, I actually, I actually got a good idea. Maybe I didn't get a good idea. Shoot. I'm trying to think about how we can get the mushroom. Where's the on and off switch? Dang it. If we had a mushroom, we could break this block. Or if we had a spike helmet. There is a spike helmet right here. But I mean, the only way to get that spike helmet is to get on top of the level here. Which doesn't seem accessible unless we can push this out of the way. Nothing can push this though, right? So like, I don't think the spike helmet is the solution right now, but let's say we could get the mushroom somehow. What if we like knocked the mushroom up here and it would bounce, it would like bounce off of this and come back. And if I were standing right here, I could actually collect this mushroom without going up there. That's actually something that would be possible to do, but I don't see how we can knock the mushroom up. Alternatively, we need to hit the on and off switch. But that doesn't seem any more doable, really. What is this? Like, you could come down here after you've hit a pow, and while the P-switch is active? What the f- You could go, or if you get a boot or something, you could go through this way, but that doesn't seem right. I'm gonna play with trying to knock that mushroom out of there, I think, because I can't think of, I can't think of any way to get past this block. All right, look, what if we do this? And then we do something like this. Yes, it doesn't work. I definitely don't want to go up there. Yeah, this doesn't seem right. Can't get, oh, I did get it in there. And it did nothing, let's go. <laughs> well, that wasn't it. <laughs> what does this do? <laughs> Wait a minute, <laughs> wait a minute, <laughs> wait a minute. <laughs> oh my God, what the heck, that actually worked. How the heck did that work? Uh, that's sort of bad news bears for me though. How do I get the items out of there though? That still kind of blows. Let me get the P-switch out before I do that. What if I do this with just the spring? I don't think it works. It doesn't work the way that I want. Because I need to keep the spring. So I think we do have to do it in the opposite order. And I think we sacrifice the P-switch, actually. Oh, that's why these are here. Oh, oh, these two, I... How did I grab that one? Okay, these two items are here because... This is actually a good hint, I think. This is a good hint. Because these are supposed to stay here. I think these items are supposed to stay here. Yeah, 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 yeah. These items are supposed to stay here. Okay, and then I'm gonna yeet the spring, and then, so the only one I lose is the P-switch. Okay, this is actually good. That's actually good level design. I'm pretty sure that's intended. So, I think we wanna do it like this. Okay. Sweet. Now we can get out of here. And we have the spring. It was a little tricky, but okay, this should be good. Now we can go up here. Yeah, we can go up here. I don't know what we're gonna get. We're gonna get the or we're gonna get the on and off switch is what we're gonna get from going up here. Hmm. And if I wanted to activate the pow, but I don't think we do want to activate the pow. Oh no. Let's go up here and see what we got. I have a feeling I don't wanna break the ah, maybe. Okay. Pfft, easy. All right. Um. Yeah, I don't know what to do about this dude though. This muncher. This schmuncher. Well, let's think about. Okay, what? Oh, I can get the P switch again. Oh, that had to be step one because look at that. Now we can just come over here and grab that. Okay. Look at this. We're doing stuff. 
Let's go. Is Big Toadette big enough to actually accomplish anything different now? Um, I think the next step is to do something up here, but it's confuzzling. I mean, I can use the pow, but I think that's wrong. Like if I throw this pow, I can bust out the top of the ceiling. I feel like we've got to try that, but like here, watch, the, here, here's like, like I don't understand why we would have to do this, but like here's something that we could theoretically do. Let's say we boop this dude over here. And now that dude's bouncing. Now if I throw the pow when he's in the air, it doesn't break the piranha. Why is that important? I have no idea. But it, it gives me a eh -eh sign when I do break the piranha, so maybe it is important? Oh god, can I even do this without... Oh, let's do it like this. Ugh, without hitting this. Um, so now we can go up here, break this... Oh, I need it to get small! I get it! Holy crap, we're actually doing it right! Now I, I literally needed that to get small. And now that I'm small, I can actually fit through this gap right here, which I would never do if I weren't small. What the heck, we're actually doing it, let's go! Oh my gosh, this is actually amazing. What are we doing? We're actually puzzling good. Okay, what's the next step? Oh, now we can break this block. We can break this block. Oh my God, dude. I love how the like, that seemed like it was gonna be the first step and it was like not at all the first step. But actually without the pow, I don't know how to get up here. Unless this works. Oh, that, that actually can make that. Oh my God, what the hell, everything's working, dude. And then we put that there and that lifts the spring. It's happening. And then, uh, get the mushrooms win, question marks my way. Oh, we're gonna have to hit the on and off switch again. Shoot, I have no idea how we're gonna hit the on and off switch again. Uh, do we have to hit the on and off switch again? Hold on, what's going on in here? I can't tell what's like, is this, is that a, what is that? Oh, it's a wood block. Okay. Is there some way to lift this stump up or something? I don't understand how to get to the goal, but yeah, it's like I have to hit the on and off switch twice, which is very confuzzling to my brain hole. How would I hit the on and off switch at all? Well, anyway, let's just keep going and then we'll see what we'll see what happens. Cause now we can literally just do that. Oh, we can actually get the P-switch too, which is kind of cool. Now how the hell do we get in the goal? <laughs> yeah, hitting the P is confusing. I think it's a GG if you hit the P-switch. If you hit the P switch, the, this P switch will become, or this P block will become open, and then a P switch can come out of this pipe, and this is a mechanism to continuously press the P switch, and it plays a, uh-uh, you did it wrong sound, and it infinitely will hit P switches, which blocks off that, blocks off that. Interesting how it blocks off this. I wonder if we can learn something from that. But then it blocks off this, which I'm pretty sure is the only way to get into the goal, unless we can move this stump somehow, or lower this, but how can we, is there some way to lower this? Even if we lowered it, it wouldn't help. No, it would help. Yeah, if we lowered it, we can go in this way. Yeah, so we actually don't need to go through the on and off blocks here if we instead lower this stump. I only have 40 seconds left, shoot. I don't even know what to try, to be honest. I don't know where to go. I don't think I can hit the on and off switch from the side. I... I'm doing the only thing I can see to do. But <laughs> I think that might have been a good idea though, but maybe we do it with the plant and then somehow it... Can you push stumps? Can, like, is there something that can push stumps? Hold on, I need to just, exp let's just experiment with this real quick. I feel like this is here for a reason. 
but I don't know what that reason is. But let's just try pushing the stump and see if it does something. Or pushing the plant into this. And then like, question mark, question mark, jank magic. Puzzle magic. Oh, this is gonna be annoying to... Uh... I think I can hit this. That doesn't do anything. <laughs> what happens if I push it beforehand with this? Shut up. Wait, 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 what if this does something? See, it moves it, but that doesn't really help. Jank? Damn it, I was banking on jank. What if we just go in here? <laughs> I feel like there might be some way to do something with this. Uh, what if I had a helmet on while I was doing this? If I had a helmet on while I was doing this, would it actually do something? Maybe something can happen here while I'm big. I don't know, is there anything else I can do while big? Oh. You can't duck. Wait, while I'm here, hold on, while I'm here, before I put it on, I can hit the P-switch again. Oh, if I don't break those blocks, I can hit the P-switch again. I have a feeling that that, or not the... That's, that's gotta be what I do, right? Maybe? Oops, I didn't wanna grab that, go back. Okay, don't break those like a dum-dum this time. So I hit this to get my P-switch. Uh, do the thing. Okay, hit the pow while the thing's in the air so it doesn't break. Um, I still don't know a good way to not get hit by this. I don't like... Man, that is fucking obnoxious! Oh, I just go on the bottom, you idiot! You idiot! Just go on the bottom! That's why it's set up like that. Alright, see, I'm just getting... I am just getting, like, salty. Ugh, I'm getting salty because of my own bad setups. <laughs> the first part is kind of cheese. There's a different way to get the mushroom once it's up top. Oh, really? Oh. Okay, that ex see, it, that explains why it felt so bad. <laughs> it just, it felt like a needlessly jank. Huh, I don't see what the other way is. Yeah, if you, honestly, if you wanted to share the other solution for that bear, since it doesn't really matter at this point, uh, just to make my life easier, and then we can see what the other solution is, I'm okay with that. Um, it, it, see, that happens so frequently in, in complicated puzzles, unfortunately. It, it happened in troll levels too, until people became really aware of it. But just like, if you have a solution that works, but is harder, it can sometimes frustrate the player, just because that's the only solution they see, and so they're like, why would the level creator make this jank solution, blah. But really, there's another solution that they just don't see. To like, almost like a quality of life solution more than anything. We're spoiled, we're spoiled because people actually make good levels these days. In Mario Maker 1, like, it'd still be a million times worse than this. Also, if I put this P-Switch in my way one more time, I'm gonna freak out. Okay. Ugh. There we go. Well, let's see if we can, let's see if we can, like, solve anything here. Um, first we have to break this. Then we have to get hit. Then we have to get this. Then we have to... Do I want to... Did I want to break one of those? <laughs> wait, wait a minute. <laughs> wait a minute. <laughs> Do I... Because I need the... I need the helmet, right? Do I not need the helmet? What do I need the helmet for? I need the helmet. Yeah, I need the helmet to get out of there. Because if I were to kick the, sh the helmet in here, it would create a... Um, it, would cre it, would in it would create a thing that continuously hits the P-switch, which is cool. But I think that makes the level unbeatable, because then... Right? Hello? Oh, well I just accidentally did that, so... Yeah, I'm pretty sure I just made the level unbeatable. Unfortunately. Because I have no way of- I have not yet broken this Kaiser block right here. And without breaking this Kaizo block right here, unless I'm missing something. 
So in order to beat the level right now, I have to grab these one-ups. But if I go up here to grab these one-ups, I'm blocked off by this spring and it's an auto-lose. Unless we somehow get rid of the spring. The... Unless this red bar is a red herring. <laughs> It doesn't seem possible without putting something on this, but I can't carry something to put on this while this is here, because I'll just hit it. So I needed the spike helmet for that. So I think we've messed up and, we'll, and we lose now. Uh, is there anything that the alternating switches do for me right now? Oh, maybe actually, hold on. Now I can get in here and I can lower that. Oh, that actually gives me an exit though. Wait, maybe this is right, and that actually gives me an exit. I think that is right, and I just do that at a different point, though. There's no way to get a... Wait, can I get the helmet back right now? Wait... Oh... I can! Right? Wait, 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 wait. Oh! My goodness, we are solving the puzzle and we don't even know how. Let's go! <laughs> I didn't even think about that! Okay. 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 Yo, let's freaking go. We just dummied our way directly into what I think is the final solution. I just almost ran through that. I think this is the final solution. GG! <laughs> wow, we uh, definitely didn't know what we were doing, but it worked, so let's go. <laughs> Heck yeah, that was awesome. Okay, let me do it the intended way. Let me do it the intended way. Oh, I forgot it's a super world, get wrecked. <laughs> Toadette should kiss, should kiss Peach, just saying. Okay, here's the intended solution for this. It's a bit more complicated. But much easier. So if we put that there, then we won't lose the mushroom. Oh my god. Spring is so trolly, okay. Okay, so now when we do this. Okay, now when we do that, that can actually just stay there and there's no rush. So that makes it so much easier without having to rush right there. And then instead we can just kind of slowly go over here. And with the actually, this is actually kind of brilliant because you use the seesaw twice. See, this lets us get that mushroom out. And this is positioned so that we can just come out like that. Um, I'm not sure... Oh, I get it. And then, and then we can... Um... Oh, this is kind of cool. So then from that point, we can hit this. Reclaim the P-switch. Yeah, this makes everything just way easier to execute. So I can I can definitely see how the the strat that I was doing was just making my life harder. Okay, because now all we have to do is, you know, just easily hit that when we have when we have time. And then see look, now I can go back down here, and now that part's easy to dodge, so there's no longer like an item juggling, do stuff fast kind of thing. Oh anyway, sick level. Sick freaking level. The other way had swag. It kind of did have swag. So anyway, I came across some very interesting science. Um, are you guys familiar with the concept of panspermia? Ruby is very familiar with this concept. Uh, so panspermia is a really cool idea about how life can spread between different planets or even potentially between different solar systems. Um, so the idea is that if something were to strike a planet, it could eject some some material from that planet that may have like microorganisms or something else living on it and then those microbes could then be transferred basically in the like meteors or whatever you would call it that may hit another planet and so um, it would be possible for for instance for life to have evolved on a different planet and then get knocked off and then sent to earth or vice versa maybe life 
was created on Earth or whatever, and then um, ended up on a different planet as well later. Yeah, we're talking microorganisms, right? Because it would have to be, right, so that's the question though, is like, how would, how would a living thing ever possibly survive like getting ejected into space, flying around in outer space, and then uh, making its way to a different planet. It seems pretty ridiculous, right? Um, so there was a journal article that just got published um, of August in this year that basically looked at, the, at this sort of a thing. So um, this research uses a really cool type of bacteria called Deinococcus radiodurans and that microbe is really special because it can survive extremely high doses of radiation that's why it's called radiodurans let's see if they have the they have the name for it right here yeah Deinococcus radiodurans um, which is really important because when you're flying around in outer space there's a whole bunch of radiation from things like UV light that um, damage cells and damage their DNA. So anyway, this thing is really cool. So what these people did in this journal article is they literally, they literally sent on a SpaceX rocket some of these bacteria to the International Space Station, um, and then they basically stuck the stuck the bacteria on the outside of the space station. So as the space station is flying around, these little tiny holes in this thing that they have, they basically stuck it to the outside of the space station, um, are filled with bacteria. So in these little, these little holes here, um, shown here in orange, are where they put different amounts of this bacteria. So like they only put a little bit of bacteria in this one and then they put a lot more in that one. And they basically asked whether these things can survive as they're, you know, freezing in the cold, dark vacuum of space, being bombarded with, you know, cosmic rays and whatever else uh, that, you know, is generally very hazardous to living things. This was a Japanese group, um, but it was aboard the International Space Station. By the way, I love the, like, project name for this. Where did they... Uh, during the space mission Tanpopo, which means dandelion in Japanese. <laughs> So that was cool. So basically what they found after doing this, and they did a bunch of, uh, they basically asked, the main central question was, can these bacteria survive? I wanna show you guys some of the actual science graphs. Like I know it's like science data can sometimes be really hard to uh, wrap your head around or whatever, but um, what this is essentially showing is how well the bacteria survived. So they had a, they had some of them, they show here in brown as ground control. And these are the, these are the bacteria that were back home. So they did like the exact same setup, but the bacteria were just left back at home. And the, basically the higher up these little dots are, um, the better they survived. So the ground control ones survived really well. Um, if you then look at the uh, light blue one for space exposed, if they only put a few bacteria in this, uh, in that well that you saw, they really didn't survive very well at all. Um, but as the thickness of, they call it the thickness of the pellet, that's like how many bacteria were in it. As it got thicker and thicker and thicker with more bacteria, they actually survived, um, this is after one year on the, on the outside of the International Space Station. So they're literally dried, frozen, in the vacuum of space, whatever. And then they, they came back a year later, took them off the space station, and they were able to grow just fine. Um, I thought, this other one is really interesting though. So this darker blue one are ones that they left in the actual cabin of the International Space Station. And ironically, those are the ones that did the worst. So like, these are the ones that were in like a humid, um, warmer environment just hanging out and they literally were like, they actually did worse. <laughs> uh, they, they think that it was probably because of the oxygen and humidity. Um, and so they just kind of like sit or sat around and I don't know, oxidized or something. So like they were literally better preserved in space than they were, or, or somebody messed up those samples. <laughs> when you're talking about science. <laughs> but yeah, it might've been because they weren't protected. I don't know, I, I don't know. That was interesting though. So they actually did this for the course of three years. And this is like, this is like classic science graphs at their finest, like, God, just make multiple graphs or something. But anyway, the only thing that you really need to get from this is that after three years, if you look at the space exposed ones, which are like, 
um, any of the, either the pink or the light blue ones, which, you know, you can see them in there, whatever. They're all basically the same. Even after three years, they were barely losing any survivability. So these things weren't just like barely hanging on. They were doing pretty good even after three years. Uh, however, so for this graph, uh, or for this um, table, what they tried to do is they tried to calculate like, okay, this is just a few years, right? But can we extrapolate from that to how long they might be able to survive um, if they were like flying around um, for much longer times? And in the environment that they tested, they could easily survive for like half of a century, which I thought was pretty cool. Um, however, if they were like truly on the surface, uh, ex exposed to absolutely everything that was hitting them, um, it probably they probably wouldn't survive as long. So they were thinking somewhere in the two to eight year range for this bacterial species, uh, if it was like on the outside exposed. Um, you see how there's like two layers? There's like a top layer of wells here, but then like this is actually like deeper down in the thing, like below this. So the ones that are sort of protected a little bit more, that's what they're, I think that's what the dark one refers to. So they're like buried in something. So basically what they're trying to say here is that like if a chunk of rock or something like that were ejected into space and the bacteria were kind of buried in it a little bit, they could survive much, 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 much longer, which makes sense, right? But like, you know, this is just a three year experiment. It's still cool. Like you could probably imagine how um, that mesh is sus, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, the mesh is sus. So they 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 like a t uh, they talk about it and account for the mesh or whatever. Uh, th there have been a bunch of other experiments that have done stuff like this too. If something got blasted off of like Mars or Earth or whatever, it could definitely get to a nearby planet in only a couple years or a couple of decades. Um, however, if you um, ever if you want to start talking about like could a microbe survive being carried on an asteroid or whatever the right word for it is, um, from one solar system to another, at that point you're talking like literal millions of years. Um, I will say, interestingly, um, there have been some studies that have found frozen bacteria in like the Arctic that has been estimated anywhere from like 100,000 years all the way to a couple million years old. And basically when they unthawed the bacteria, it was still alive. Um, there is some question about these types of experiments though, because it's really hard to control for whether they like introduce some contamination during gathering the samples. Like it's hard to know that the bacteria are really that old. Yeah, right. So they found like prehistoric bacteria and revived it, right. Um, but aren't there inner solar planets that could get hit from solar objects and recently injected into that system? Yeah, so um, that uh, uh, loops brings up a good point. An entire planet could literally be ejected from a solar system and then travel to um, and then travel to another uh, solar system or whatever. Like it would be, we're talking again, we're talking many, 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 many millions of years and really rare probabilities. But when the universe is the size that it is with as many planets and stars that it is, is it really that improbable? Uh, so anyway, it's interesting. I think it's interesting because these bacteria are pretty amazing. And so um, th there's another paper that I read that was really cool too. So check this out. It's called DNA Double-Stranded Break Repair at negative 15 C. And this is showing that like bacteria aren't even necessarily just static and like in a, in a set or in like a stasis mode uh, when they're frozen. At this temperature, which is below freezing, they showed that bacteria are actively repairing their DNA. And this is extremely important because if an organism was just, you know, completely static, eventually its DNA would degrade, even if you like tried to revive it later and conditions were right. And so this is showing that literally these bacteria, it's called Psychrobacter arcticus. <laughs> Psycho, I guess, means cold or something like that. Um, so, like, they're literally repairing ionizing radiation damage to themselves while being while frozen. And there's a whole bunch of speculation about how that is or whatever. But really, really cool stuff. I mean, bacteria are crazy. Bacteria are super crazy. So, uh, I think all this stuff is really interesting because it sort of gives some idea of how, like, we know that other planets have really harsh environments, and our own planet probably had a much harsher environment, you know, our definition of harsh, anyway. 
um, for most of its existence, or at least for a lot of its existence. And these bacteria are sort of an insight into how life could still survive even in these ridiculous environments. So anyway, I thought that was cool. Really neat paper. I love how I love how people are doing this stuff. They're like, hey, what happens if we slap some bacteria on the outside of the space station for three years? <laughs> and I think it was cool that it was uh, they sent this up on SpaceX's rocket. So like whenever you see like a SpaceX launch and they're delivering stuff to the ISS. This was one of the things that they delivered, which is pretty cool. So yeah, one of the last experiments that they did in this is they specifically chose this type of bacteria because it can sort of repair um, damage to its DNA from UV light. And um, they did some genetics. This is like horrible. This is so, this is so classic science graph because like on this side, it goes like negative, but then on this side, going to the right goes positive. It's just like, this is, this is such a classic science graph. <laughs> it's so bad, it's so bad. But the, the, the basic take home message of this, uh, of this graph here is that when they took those same type of bacteria, but they removed their, um, one of the genes that they used to repair damage from DNA due to UV light, uh, that's this UVS one here, shortwave UV. These guys um, essentially died a lot faster um, without that gene that allows them to repair their DNA. So I just think it's cool that you can have a gene that just makes you resistant to UV light. And that's another cool thing that they did in this. I, this is how I get all my science information, by the way, is I just read these like journal articles, which I know it can be super intimidating to people, but even the abstract of this one is pretty understandable. The more you know, 